three, two, one. Hello and welcome to Maltbox, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and this is Whiskey Review 112. What I have for you today is something quite exciting. It is a new release here in the UK. It's been in the US for a little while, but it's finally made it here in the United Kingdom. It is a Highland single malt Scotch whiskey. It is a beer cask finish single malt Scotch whiskey. Hmm. It comes in the form of this. The Deanston Stout Cask Finish single malt whiskey utilising Dragon's Milk Stout Casks. There it is. Very, very fetching and striking orange and grey slash black. And there's the info for you there. So Dragon's Milk is a brewery out in Michigan in the United States. And the stout that has been used, put into those casks, the casks themselves were actually ex-bourbon casks. So this has already been finished in a cask that's held stout that previously held bourbon. So it's an ex-bourbon X stout finish type deal. A little bit complicated. So, oh, hello. I'm very excited to review this one for you guys because I'll be honest, you know, I'll be open. I'm a bit of a Deanston fan. Everyone's got a soft spot distillery, I think, or one, one of the sort of like under the radar guys that they wish got a little bit more attention or feel they deserve more attention, but not too much attention because then I don't want everyone buying it kind of thing. That's what we all say, isn't it? Now, this is a 50.5% release, so it's a ch big, big old strength, it's a chunky strength. It is natural colour, it is non-chill filtered, as I can attest to from that little bit of signage there. So what I'll be doing is I'll be going through it with water and without, obviously initially without, because you can't put water in something and then take it out. Unless, you know, unless you evaporate and well, not, not going down that road. Right, anyway. So, here we go. So 50.5% initially. Natural colour. There is that light golden colour. Now this will have initially been matured in either ex-bourbon, refill bourbon or hogsheads. I'm really not too sure what the initial maturation was. What I do know is that the finishing period where the whiskey went into the stout casks was six months. So half a year. On the nose. I think this is definitely gonna be one of those whiskies that benefits from a little more time in the glass. And to do that, I'll give it a swirl to aerate it a little bit. So, quite thick. There's a little bit of citrus in there. For me, there's some trademark Deanston notes as well, however. A lovely maltiness. There's a little bit of ginger and there's some toffee. Lemon zest. Some sort of like biscuity note in there. Slight nuttiness. A little bit of heat. It is a high strength, bearing that bear that in mind. There is something almost hoppy about it. I feel like when you hear a beer cask finish, for example, like the Glenfiddich. IPA cask finish, you, you almost sort of feel like you're looking for those levels, those comparisons with the beer. Now, there is a slight hoppiness to it, but that falls in line with that kind of like little bit of bitterness on the back. But up front, it's all sweet, it's all light, it's all quite, quite pleasant indeed. Now on the palette, again, full strength. What I've not shown you is the, the legs on that, so I've just given it a swirl. So some legs going down the glass there. Hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Right, 
Firstly, fantastic mouthfeel. It's so thick, it's so oily, which I do find quite a lot with Deanston. And it's one of the things that I like about their whiskies. Now, the reason I said wow a few times is because it's incredibly intense after a little while. You get this lovely, big, spicy hit right on the front of your tongue. Apart from that, what I'm getting is more of that lovely, sort of like key Deanston multi note. There's also, again, some toffee, but arguably for me, it's getting a little bit darker now. It's getting a little bit richer. It's what we have in the UK, something called treacle toffee, which is something that you have on bonfire night, which is November the 5th. And that's used, shockingly enough, it's made using treacle rather than golden syrup. What, I, what I've got to say is, again, that texture, it's covered every every little bit of my mouth. Even my lips feel a little bit sticky. It's like I've just eaten toffees, which is a note that I'm getting here now. Going into that finish, I'm getting a little bit of chocolate and a little bit of bitterness. Again, could that be hops? I don't know, to be honest with you. What I would say is before that bitterness, you do have a nice little bit of fruit ahead of it. Now, if you think about your West Coast IPAs and things like that, which are incredibly fruit forward, then you get hit with this incredible bitterness, which is measured in IBUs. That's the unit of measurement to determine the bitterness of the beer. Now, stout is obviously a dark beer. It's something that I drink quite a lot of. We are big fans of stout here in the north of England because generally speaking, it's quite cold and wet up here. So we like beers that are a little bit chunky, a little bit thicker, something that will see us through the night. Now, I suppose I might as well clear up the fact that this has been matured, well finished should I say, for six months in casks that previously held an incredibly dark beer does not necessarily dictate that that will immediately result in a black whiskey. As you can see, this does not look like Coca-Cola. So it's not like if you had a cask of Guinness, for example, a wooden cask of Guinness, if you took that out and put whiskey in it, for six months, it wouldn't necessarily change the colour of it. Mm, butterscotch. Again, some citrus there. Again, the ginger. A lovely kind of honey note in there as well now. And Again, the finish, I'm finding the same thing. It's getting a little bit bitter, it's quite long. But do you know what? That bitterness is actually quite welcomed because you can probably tell the rest of the dram is quite sticky, it's quite sweet, so you've got those nice multi notes. So it actually does provide a nice dimension to it and it's actually getting longer. And the chocolate is coming out now as well. Oh, hmm. Right, okay, I'm gonna put this down because I need both hands. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a teaspoon of water into this dram. So I've got about that much left. So I'll put about, probably half a teaspoon actually, I don't think it'll need that much given the amount I've got. Just try and get it down to the mid 40s I guess, in terms of ABV. Now, what I haven't addressed is the price of this whiskey. Now, I picked this up as soon as it went on pre-sale on Amazon for £40. It will now set you back about £45 a bottle. It is a no-age statement whiskey, alright? so. It's not 12 years old, it's not 10 years old, it doesn't display an age anywhere on the bottle. So I estimate that this is probably containing whiskies, and this is pure speculation, probably between the ages of 5 and 8 years old. Could be older, could be a little bit younger. I mean, what I will say is it drinks older than 5 years old. Um, it does already have comparisons to their Virgin Oak bottling, but I think it's already got another dimension. The fact that you're getting already before we've even tasted it with water, the fact that you're getting a whiskey that's bottled at a strength such as 50.5% with a unique cask finish at £45 is already, in my opinion, providing pretty, pretty damn good value in today's market, to be honest. It's not a brewery that I've come across, obviously given it's in the US, although I do drink quite a bit of US beer as well. And that does explain to some degrees to why it was released in the US prior to coming to the UK. Now, I've already mentioned, I quite like Deanston, I do. I have quite a few of them in my collection. However, as with any whiskey, every whiskey that I review, I am incredibly subjective about. 
I review each whiskey on its own merits and or failings. If you ever do get the chance, however, I really would recommend going to visit Deanston Distillery. It's a very unique place. It's, in the scheme of things, one of the younger whisky distilleries going up in Scotland. It wasn't established till the 1960s in an old cotton mill. So basically the cotton industry really took a turn. Where I live, for example, in Lancashire, huge cotton industry that after the early 1900s all got outsourced to various countries and all the mills shut down. And that's what you're seeing here. And somebody swooped in, bought the mill and said, do you know what, I'm going to turn this into a, a distillery. And interestingly, one interesting fact about Deanston is that it actually has a hydroelectric power plant because it runs, there's a river that runs next to it and they've basically got a big water wheel and that water wheel converts the power of the water into electricity. It's green. How cool is that? Also incredibly friendly staff, really friendly staff. They really know the stuff and they're very friendly. And the maturation warehouses, particularly in the vaults, is just very, very cool. Very cool. So if you're around Stirling, if you do a trip to Scotland, really would recommend stopping in at Deanston Distillery. So again, with a little bit of water. The legs are in fact not going down the glass any slower after adding that teaspoon of water. On the nose, Interesting, okay. Now, prior to putting that teaspoon of water in there, or half a teaspoon, whatever it was, I mentioned briefly something around citrus and hops. Now for me, they're much more prevalent now that I've added water to this dram. It's still quite intense, it's still quite smooth. There's a little bit of creaminess to the nose now, a little bit of vanilla that I might not have actually picked up before. There's a warm biscuit note, something like fresh shortbread, for example, that's coming out of the oven. So shortbread with sugar sprinkled on the top. It is still quite sweet, but you've got this lovely warm biscuit note. And again, that's citrus. And arguably, it could well just be in my head, guys, a slight hoppy bitter edge. I mean, it's worth pointing out that realistically stout will not be as heavily hopped, for example, as the example I mentioned before, a West Coast IPA. It will still have a little bit of bitterness to it, but it's not going to be anywhere near as tropical fruit led or bitter as an IPA or a pale ale. On the palate. Again, still very, very good mouthfeel indeed. You've still got that lovely spiciness that just comes through. Very thick, still very oily. So you've got spices in there. You've got crunching up cornflakes, weirdly, but it's very, very pleasant. You've got ginger, again. You've got a little bit of citrus again. You've got creaminess to it. We've got some fresh apple now going into the finish. It's freshening up a little bit. There's toffee, but unlike prior to adding water, where it's sort of a richer, heavier treacle toffee that I used as an example, it's more butterscotch, it's more sort of light caramel, I'm finding. There's a little bit of sultana and raisin in there now as well. The finish, probably not as impactful, I'd say, with water. However, it's still got a nice bitter edge to it. There's still a little bit of Probably not chocolate this time, more coffee for me. Very enjoyable drum. Really, really is. I don't regret buying two of these off the bat. Normally I don't. Normally I buy one, try it, and then go back in and buy another or, or several, depending on how much I like it. But knowing that I've not tried a bad Deanston today, I went and bought two straight away. I will be doing more Deanston reviews, guys, as well, because I do have quite a few of them. However, if you've liked what you've seen today, please do feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'm on Twitter at Maltbox. I'm on Instagram at Maltbox Whiskey. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon.